As for Click and Play, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be doing lighting as part of my Ford Transit Mark 7 Minibus camper van conversion series. Now, in this video, we're going to be covering how I measured the wiring, how I mounted the wiring wrong, how I mounted the wiring correctly, how to figure out which wire is which if you've labeled it wrong, how to figure out which wire is the plus and minus on a set of lights if you don't know that, how to actually mount the lights into the wood, and then how to connect it all together. The only thing I don't cover in this video is adding my switches because I forgot to film that bit, don't know why. If you don't want to watch the whole video, that is fine. I've put timestamps in the description below, so if you're looking for a specific bit of information, you can just skip to the section that's relevant to you. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, I started roughly marking out where my lights were going to go in the van. Next, I started to measure and cut pieces of wire to go between the points that I just marked out. I found using washing line was a really good way to measure it before cutting the wire off the reel. Every time I cut a section, I also labelled it and numbered it, so I knew which cable set was going where. And luckily, I had just enough wire to get this done. Then I started prepping the wires by stripping the ends off them. Because at this point, I was going to solder connectors to the end, thinking it would make life easier. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue some conduit to the roof to hold these in place before I start my insulation. By this point, I'd already soldered my connectors on, but I didn't show you that because it was boring and I made a real terrible job of it. And because I'd already soldered the connectors on, it meant I had to cut a straight line down each piece of conduit just to feed the wires in, which as you can see, is an absolute pain in the arse. But I carried on anyway, because at the time I thought this was a really good idea. Ah, fuck. Ah. After I'd finished burning myself with a hot glue gun, I started to stick all the pieces to the roof of the van, and yeah, it was coming together quite nice and looking quite tidy. But when I got to the van the next day, this is what I found. Apparently the metal didn't like things being stuck to it with a hot glue gun, so I scrapped the whole idea and started from scratch. Here's another fun little mistake. I ran two sets of wires from the back of the van to the front of the van to power the lights and the fan. But now I have got no idea which one's which, and I need to figure that out before I start assembling my lighting. So I decided to grab a spare PC fan and a power source, twist the wires together to test out which wires which so I can hook up my lights. Oh, first time, no way. Over there. Just touch these together and there we go. Now I've had to do quite a weird layout, which I will show you now, which is this weird zigzaggy pattern. Well, the reason I've done that is because the cables have to feed through the center bit. In the framework, there is a nice gap in the center, which means I can feed it underneath the battens. That way the cladding isn't going to interfere with the cables when it goes on. So the battens were supporting some of the weight of the cables. Next, I started taping the ends together and then just sticking the rest of the wires to the insulation. Because once the cladding goes onto this, it doesn't matter if the tape comes loose, the wires won't be going anywhere. And there we go, basic layout done. Now I did have a problem with the very front section because there isn't a gap to feed the wire underneath this beam. What I decided to do is run the cable all the way to the left hand side here and this is actually where I'm going to place my switch. That way when I come into the van I'm not fumbling around to turn the lights on, it'll just be right next to the door. I also rigged up a very small wire set for a separate circuit of lights that is going to be over my bed. Now for the actual fitting of the lights, I did a test piece first because I didn't want to ruin my pre-cut timber and it's a good job I did. Starting with a pilot hole first and then going to use, I think it was a 50mm circular drill bit to make a perfect hole for the light to pop into. You want to make sure you start drilling from the side that is going to be showing. That way when the drill bit goes through, all the rough edges are on the back side that gets hidden. So these are the lights I've gone for. I could have gone for the ones with the winged clips, but they were about £30 for four, whereas these ones were £20 for six. But 
the metal brackets that are there to hold them in aren't going through the hole. So on my test cut, I've put two little spaces either side to kind of push the light through and then twist it on. Now this still didn't seem to work, so I thought maybe it was designed for thinner material. So I grabbed some pliers and started trying to stretch the wings out to, to make it go around the wood. I'm very, very glad I did a test cut because the way I thought it was supposed to go in seems completely wrong. So I've done another one where I put two ever so slight notches in it and then pushed a new light in and it looks like it just holds itself in place by force. I'm only really going to find out when I start driving the van around, but if they do end up popping out, I guess I'll put some silicon on it to keep it in place maybe. Before I install the lights, I've got to do a bit of prep work because these things have connectors and tons of wire on the end. I also don't know which one's plus, so I've got to figure that out as well. Now, I noticed one of the wires had this line thingy printed down it. Now, I'd actually seen that on the PC fan that I was messing around with earlier. So my thinking is that wire is exactly the same and I'm gonna guess that that is the negative. So I need to test it out first. I'm gonna test out the fan and then test the light then we can get to fitting. I grabbed a spare USB wire and then started to dismantle it so I could see which was red and which was black. Then I grabbed the fan and twisted the black cable with the fan wire that had the lines printed on it. Once the two wires were connected, all I needed to do was plug it in and hey presto, it worked. So now I'm just gonna replicate the same thing using the black wire going towards the one with the printed lines on it plug it in and yeah, nothing happened. So I grabbed a 12 volt battery just in case the power pack was the problem and still nothing happened. This is the light I was using to test my wood fitting earlier and somehow I have snapped the connector on the inside. So I had to grab a fresh light to do another test. I dismantled this one straight away to check the connections were all intact. Decided to go straight for the 12 volt battery because 12 volt camper system, 12 volt battery, it made sense. Touch the two wires and hey presto, light is working. Now that I know which wire is the minus, it's time to get the rest of the lights ready to install into the van. Okay, so I've kind of been struggling with how I'm going to fit my light into the, onto the cables. And here's why. I got these butt connectors. They are 1.5mm butt connectors for my cable. And I just thought I was going to twist my cable together and put the butt connector on. But obviously 1.5mm cable plus 1.5mm cable is not 1.5mm cable anymore. So it won't go into the butt connectors. So, then I had a brainwave that... The black has to be attached to the black, and the red has to be attached to the red, obviously. I could just use the butt connector to do that, and then kind of attach the light wire in, and it should work. And it did, and that's what I'm doing. So let me show you how I did that now. I know that last bit sounded confusing, so let me talk you through it as I'm doing it. Twisting the cables together, and then putting the butt connectors on the end of the black and the red to start with. Now, the lighting wire is actually quite thin, so making sure you've got the plus and the minus the right way round, you can grab the exposed cable and twist the lighting wire round the exposed one together. This way, it wasn't too thick to go into the book connector, and once it's crimped on, it'll make a really solid connection. So now both the red and the black wires are connected together as if they were each a solid line. And the plus and the minus from the light are also now connected to the correct colours. Now we've just got to tuck the cables underneath the cladding, line up the metallic springs from the lights with the grooves you've cut in the hole, then just push it in.
Next ones are super easy because it's the end of the light set. So it starts at one end with a switch all the way down and ends with one light. And I've got two sets of lights, the front half and the bedroom ones. And there we go, my lighting circuit was done. It was so exciting turning it on for the first time. It was even more exciting when I turned it on at night later on that day. And obviously to turn it on, you need power, which is going to be in the next video when I do all my electrics. But yeah, the one thing I don't think I touched on properly in the video was the fact that I was using a parallel circuit. I didn't know what I was doing when I started, but most of the research I was doing off YouTube, the internet, pointed towards a parallel one. Greg Virgo's video really helped to drive that home as well. Parallel circuit just means you've got a power source and a red and a black wire going all the way along in a straight line, and then you just put your lights in between it all the way to the very end. I now know using a hot glue gun to stick stuff to metal isn't a great idea. I should have been using Sikaflex or something like that. There probably is a better way of mounting the electrics and the wires, but most videos I'd seen, they had to poke it through the insulation, so I felt my solution was a decent one, I think. I hope. I did briefly mention that at the start, I soldered connectors on to the wires, which I thought would make life easy, and technically it would, but those book connectors, just being able to crimp them on, job's done, so much quicker, so much easier. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. The one thing I definitely would do if I was doing this again is I would leave much more cable on everything. Like extra cable coming out of the wire holes, extra cable on the wires themselves. I, would, I just had too short cable. It was really tricky to work around that area. It wasn't impossible, but it was quite tricky. So yeah, if I was doing it again, I'd leave extra length on cables. There we go. So as usual, any tips, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if not, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.